Welcome to the Empower Women in Menopause podcast with your girl, Trudy German. I'm an online personal trainer and wellness coach for women going through perimenopause. Over here, we talk about all things perimenopausal, menopausal, and postmenopausal, and how to thrive through this transition. We speak openly and candidly about what going through this change really consists of, the good, the bad, the ugly, and we also dismiss a lot of the myths or all the myths and talk about how this change affects you mentally, emotionally, physically, and professionally. So let's get into this week's episode. Hello, gorgeous. (laughs) I don't know why I keep laughing. I don't know why every episode I say this. Hello, welcome. (laughs) This is episode four. And today I'm going to answer your question. So it's more for Q&A. And I wanted to do this Q&A because I get a lot of questions on TikTok and on Instagram. And I was like, let me just go ahead and answer them. So let's get into this. And of course, if you're not following me on TikTok or the gram, it's train with Trudy. So, um, first question, (laughs) I laugh looking at this one because I get asked this one a lot. First question is, can I become pregnant during perimenopause? (laughs) And I laugh because a lot of women ask this question because you're like, can I? Or because once again, they don't realize that it's not menopause, it's perimenopause. The answer is yes, you most certainly can become pregnant during perimenopause. Outside of teen pregnancies, um, perimenopausal women have the second highest rate of whoopsie unplanned pregnancy, which it kind of makes sense, right? Because when you think about it, um, when you're perimenopausal, you may get a period, you may not get one. Um, So a lot of women still don't realize that to be or menopause is once you've gone 12 consecutive months without a period, uh, that's when it's menopause. So a lot of women may, you know, not get a period for a month, for two months, for three months, for six consecutive months and feel, oh, I'm menopausal. And when you're menopausal, once you hit menopause, you can't become pregnant, but you're perimenopausal because <laughs> you haven't gone 12 consecutive months and you may become pregnant. So now that you know that, do what you wish with it. Govern yourself accordingly <laughs> if you want to become pregnant or not. Um, next question. I think I'm perimenopausal, but my doctor says no. What do I do? This is another pretty common one, and I'm pretty familiar with these because remember, I'm a wellness coach. Um, I coach perimenopausal women, how to lose belly fat, because that's something they really struggle with. And a lot of my clients, my friends, even um, people in my community on Instagram talk about this a lot, where you know they're displaying so many symptoms, they go to their doctors. Their doctors completely dismiss them by saying things like, you're too young or no, you're fine. It's just life. Or some doctors straight up tell them, hey, you may be going through menopause and that's it. Deal with it. So the reason why your doctor uh, may say you're not perimenopausal is because they may have run blood works. So I think it was in episode one where I spoke about You may feel like or your body may be telling you you're going through perimenopause, but you do all the blood work and they come back normal. That is because your hormones are fluctuating so much at this point, at this stage, where when those blood works were completed, everything may have been normal. Maybe the day before, they would have been different. They would have been imbalanced maybe an hour earlier. But because the hormones are fluctuating so much, it's usually pretty hard, pretty difficult to tell sometimes with um, the blood work. So a few things that you can do to um, identify if you are perimenopausal. Remember, I am not a doctor, right? It is important that I remind you of this. Is 
know the symptoms. And I know a lot of us know about hot flashes, night sweats, anxiety, moodiness, stuff like that. But there are over 80 other symptoms. And you know what? I just got a podcast idea. I'm going to do one about... I'm going to do a series on the different symptoms because there are over 80 different symptoms. So it could be um, dry, itchy skin, dry nails, dry hair, um, brittle nails, changing your boob size. Boob may become bigger, larger. They may start to hang a little more. They may be. They may start feeling more tender. Period, of course, becomes more frequent when the period does come, um, the flow may be heavier. It may be lighter. It may last longer. It may pop up like Jack in the box. There's so many different symptoms. So a few things that you can definitely do is, um, you know, under, first of all, pay attention to your body. A lot of us, a lot of you don't pay attention to your body because we are so busy. Go, 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 go. Um, you know, if something feels off, we kind of push it to the back. We don't have time to look into what's going on or, you know, pop a pill, pop something and carry on. But you need to start paying attention to your body and taking notes, taking inventory, take the, take notes on your phone because we all have our phone on us so much throughout the day. So take inventory of what's going on and understand the symptoms. So that's usually one way that you can tell. All right. So question number three, at what age does perimenopause start? How long does it last for? Uh, so there's kind of two questions I just kind of joined. So it varies. Um, perimenopause can start in your 40s. It can start even in your late 30s. And it can start in your in the 50s. There is no set age because the average age um, for menopause is 51. Remember, that is average. If you're 55 and not there yet, that's fine. If you're 45 and you're there, that's also fine. If you're 25 and you're there, that you definitely want to speak to your doctor about. Um, but that's the average age. And perimenopause symptoms can last anywhere from seven to 15 years. Yes. And remember, I think I did mention this in another podcast episode. Not because you've hit menopause once you've gone those 12 consecutive months without a period. It doesn't mean that once you get there, that your symptoms disappear. Those bad boy can continue another 10, 15 years. So I also want you to be cognizant of that, you know, be open-minded and remember that. You're here because you're a woman currently going through a perimenopause, right? You feel lost, confused, you're constantly tired, moody, anxious, and grumpy. You don't recognize yourself, but you want to feel vivacious. You want to feel energetic. You want to feel sexy and happy, right? You want to feel like yourself again. Well, if this is you and you're ready to start feeling like you again, while going through perimenopause, then I am definitely here to help you with that. Let's schedule a free consultation to, and let's chat and see how I can help you. Just go ahead and check the description below and the link is there. Another question. I think this is what question number four. Um, I haven't had a period in five years, but I still get hot flashes. Why is this? So I kind of just touched on this one. <laughs> I've gotten a lot of these questions. I'm going to re in episode one, I did discuss, I did um, give the definition of menopause, postmenopause, and perimenopause. Remember, menopause is once you've gone 12 consecutive months without a period. Um, once you hit that, then you are postmenopause, your menopause, and then postmenopause. And as I just mentioned before, a lot of the symptoms that you experience during perimenopause, they will continue. They may continue um, postmenopause because your hormones are still fluctuating, right? You simply won't get a period. The period is the big difference. So no period, um, no eggs, you won't become pregnant, but you can still experience these post menopause. And as I did mention before, they can continue up till 15 years. 
if the symptoms are, um, the symptoms should not be as severe as post as pre-menopause, but if they are, then you may definitely want to check with your doctor as to what's going on. And the next one is no matter what I do, I can't lose the belly fat. What's going on? Mm, I just did a whole podcast episode on this one, um, episode number three. So please go and take a listen to that one. Um, three things that you can do to lose belly fat. But part of the reason why losing belly fat during perimenopause and postmenopause becomes more challenging is, as I've mentioned before, the decline in estrogen. Estrogen is responsible for so many things like help um, regulating our appetite. It helps us um, to build muscles. It helps us to repair muscles. So if our estrogen level is declining and we are not doing anything so sorry, our estrogen level is declining. So our muscle mass is declining. So that muscles is being turned to fat. If we're not doing anything like lifting weights, <laughs> um, not an hour of cardio every day or going on these extreme diets, those are not going to have you lose belly fat. That's going to give you that quote unquote skinny fat look or make you gain more fat in your stomach. So definitely start lifting weights. Um, go back and listen to episode number three, where I, that was an entire episode where I spoke about things that you can do to lose belly fat. And the next one was, what's my thought on HRT and HT? So HRT is hormone replacement therapy. HT is hormone therapy. These are two different things. Um, this is something that I'm not going to talk about and I don't talk about for the fact that part of what I do is also staying in my lane. I am not a doctor and there's been a lot of controversy, a lot of conflicting studies with HRT and HT. And this is something that you should definitely, definitely discuss with your doctor because this is, you should take it or not take it based on an individual basis because your current, your past and your family's um, medical history has to be taken into consideration. Your doctor would know that and would be able to advise you um, as to which if you're eligible for it. So this is something I don't even give my opinion on this one because it is a very slippery slope. And as I said, this is something to discuss definitely with your doctor, which I am not. Part of what I do is also, you know, staying in my lane, as I like to say, if I'm the only one <laughs> in the car, I am not going in the HOV lane because I do not want that ticket, right? So definitely, definitely discuss this with your doctor. Another question was, I'm constantly exhausted. What can I do to help this? So another reason why you may feel exhausted during um, perimenopause, once again, good old estrogen. Estrogen is responsible for so many things. One of them is our energy levels, right? So when we start feeling as the as our estrogen level decline during perimenopause, so does our energy. A few things that you can definitely do to increase your energy, energy, sorry, drink water. Please do not reach for the caffeine at 3 p.m. Please do not reach for that. Um, I was about to call the brand. I don't want to mention their name, but don't reach for any of those drink, those caffeinated energy drink. Please do not do that. I know you think that they may be working, but they're making it worse. What I want you to do is to ha start having more water throughout the day. Water does give you energy. Also, start moving a little more. And I know you're probably thinking, girl, did you just not hear when I said I am tired? So 
you're tired because you're also probably not moving enough. So when I mean move, I'm not telling you to go do 10 burpees. Go for a five minute walk. You live in an apartment, walk building, walk up and down the hall, walk up and down the stairs. If I'm recording this now in winter in Toronto, if you can't get outside, walk up and down inside, find an indoor track. It's just if you're somewhere where the weather allows you, go for a walk. It does not have to be um, strenuous because you don't have the energy, but you still need to do something to increase your energy level because the fact is you got work to do. You got things to do, right? And of course, um, make sure you're eating enough protein. Don't diet, please. Please do not be dieting. Please do not be cutting your carbs. These are things that you definitely need that will increase your energy level. Listen, I know this time, this transition is really, really rough for a lot of you. I am not disputing that. When I started going through mine, it was rough, but I was able to kind of take steps. And now it's just like, I'm kind of cruising to be honest with you. But I want you to think about this. During perimenopause, um, the more stressful life, you've been living over the last 20, 30 years, the more unhealthy your lifestyle has been, the more severe your perimenopausal symptoms are going to be because the hormones, your hormones have been taking so much over the last 20, 30 years. Now they're tired. They're tired. They're like, I need you to start taking care of me. And remember this, every single function in our body, in your body is governed by your hormones, which is, which starts, um, in the endocrine system. So not getting enough sleep, um, not moving enough, eating crap, not managing stress properly. Notice I didn't say not stressing. It's about managing stress, um, drugs, alcohol, all those things over the years have interrupted our endocrine system. It has interrupted our, um, cause an imbalance in our hormones. And this is why for some of us, it's more severe than the other. These are steps that you can take. Start with small steps and give it a chance. Please choose one thing that I just mentioned. Either start drinking more water, um, moving five minutes every day, whatever it is, start making small changes and be consistent with them for four to six weeks. Please don't think that you're going to start this on Monday and by Friday, all the symptoms have dissipated. No, because it is about making lifestyle changes. It's about, um, you know, going from living an unhealthy life to a living and a healthier one. And this is something that when I work with clients, I definitely make sure we are doing because it is not about a quick fix. There is no quick fix. I know you may not want to hear that, but it is the truth. So those are your questions answered. I think I said six, but I think I answered seven. (laughs) Please, if you have any questions, um, definitely comment below or slide in my DM and ask me. As I mentioned before, um, you know, if you are a perimenopausal woman looking to lose belly fat, definitely click the link below to schedule a call. Let us talk. I can definitely help you with that. Um, and as I said, it's about making lifestyle changes. And once we start making lifestyle changes, then you notice a lot of the other symptoms outside of belly fat starts to, um, disappear. Right. So until the next episode, (laughs) Au revoir. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the episode. And as I've mentioned before, my goal is to empower women in menopause. And by you sharing this episode with other women, you know, like share it on your stories, then you will definitely be helping me help other women. So go ahead and share it on your stories. And please, please, when you share it, don't forget to tag me at Train with Trudy. Until the next episode, have a fabulous one.